Hello everyone, my name is Arcosphere and today we are going to talk about the Lost Ark Reaper class. I thought that this will be a great idea to share with you all my knowledge about it, especially when it's finally coming to EU and A regions. That's why I decided to create a very detailed in-depth guide where I will try to cover all the aspects of the class that I found during my long journey as a Reaper main. Just a few words about myself. Reaper became my main class as soon as it was released on the Russian server on 21st of April of 2021. I cleared all the current content multiple times, except the hell modes. I'm currently almost 1597 gear score, which is 8th result across two Russian servers. Reaper is the third class from Assassin Archetype, back attack only class with the best counter attack in the game. She is using a single dagger as a weapon can go into invisibility mode, summon a shadow clone, has no mana or energy, just an empty bar. Has a gouge bar that works differently for each class engravings. Three different types of skills. Green are dagger skills, purple are shadow skills, red are raid or swoop skills. Ripper Pros. Cool looking skills and animations. One of the best damage dealers in the game. In my opinion, we can consider Reaper as at least top 5 DPS class if you play properly. Very high crit numbers with the Moon Sound class engraving. High skill cap. You can do a lot of things with the class. In good hands, it can create some miracles. A lot of different ways to be behind the foe, positioning, how to use the rotation according to the right exact moment. Very mobile. Low effective health pool is compensated by at least 4 out of 8 skills on your panel which will provide a different kind of movement and positioning. You can mix them in many ways to be effective. Great for solo content, wall done, guardian carry services, etc. A Reaper cons. Low effective health pool. This is a combination of low HP pool health modifier and low defense rank. On top of it, grudge and course doll are both mandatory irreplaceable engravings that force you to pay a big price for your mistakes. Just take a look at the screenshot. Reaper is dead last with Deadeye, Gunslinger and Scout. Not feels great on equal item level content like Heroic Guardian, Abyssal Trial, etc. Due to only 1200 specialization our rotation is completely broken. High dependence on a gear tripods rune. This class will work and start to shine only when you have put everything together. Earth Entropy Set, Tripods, Level 4, 5, Runes, Correct Build, Stats, etc. Back Attack, Class Only. Almost all of our outgoing damage is going through the back. Only this can stop you from playing it. Just take a look at this example. The difference in damage is huge. High skill cap. The overall entry level is pretty high in comparison with the Scrapper or Berserker. High risk, hard reward class requires constant attention from your side. A lot of things that you need to keep in mind while playing, like false movements, the patterns, don't miss a back attack, find the best and efficient way to gain gauge, moving across the field, constant spamming of the shadow dot, even if you not in the combat. Use skills accordingly to the skill bar that are not on the cooldown and really bad weapon glow. This is one of the, the worst glows in the game compared to the other classes like gun lancer or sorcerers. Gauge bar. Reaper is the class that built around gauge bar. We can fill it to gain additional class mechanics and damage boost according to which of two class engravings we are going to use. Moon Sound and Thirst. I'm going to talk about class engravings a bit later. So, how we can fill a gauge bar? Number one, the main source of gauge generation are dagger and shadow skills. Number two, by auto attacks. We will use this method when all our skills are under the cooldown 
and we have no other things to do. Auto attacks generate a very small gauge amount, but this is still better than nothing. Number three, with ultimate ability, gauge bar will be filled instantly, but with a five minutes cooldown. And number four, by literally doing nothing. It feels really, really slow. This usually happens when you cannot interact with the foe because of the mechanics, animation lock, like Walton 64 bars counterattack. We can increase gate generation with number one, specialization. The more specialization we will have, it will be faster to fill our gauge bar. I'm sitting on 1807 specialization with a 10% buff coming from my pet and this gives me 77.55% of additional gauge generation. Number 2. Skill itself. Some skills have more gauge generation, some less. Note that gauge generation is individual for every skill, by other words, every dagger or shadow skill has their own internal gauge generation ratio. Let's take a look on the Shadow Storm and Shadow Dot examples. Shadow Storm. Shadow Dot. Another important criteria is a cooldown of the skill. Skill can give more gauge but his cooldown will be higher. Shadow Storm. 22 second cooldown. Fill the full gauge bar. Shadow Dot. 7 second cooldown. Much less gauge generation. Number 3. Tripods on some skills. For example, Shadow Storm with a tier 1 tripod. Charge Shadow. And number 4. Wealth Runes. On Dagger and Shadow skills. When the gauge bar is filled, we have two options. Option number 1. Press Z to summon a Shadow Clone. While clone is active, Reaper gains invisibility for all enemies more than 4 meters away. Invisibility effect called Shadow Energy or Persona, which lasts for 10 seconds. While we in Shadow Energy or Persona, movement speed increased by 30%. And raid skill damage increased by 25% once stuck per second, up to 5 stacks. When the Persona effect expires or lost, Shadow Clone will disappear and invisibility ends. Whenever Z is pressed, Reaper jump back in the opposite direction of the mouse pointer. Reaper will not lose her invisibility if she will be hit or use a healing potion. A Reaper will lose her invisibility if she will throw a grenade, flare or by using any skills, including an auto attack. Shadow Clone can attack enemies with a Reaper basic auto attack, dealing very low amount of damage. You can control it by clicking a shift. If you will not control the clone, she will go to the nearest enemy and start attacking. Clone purpose is to be a dummy doll that takes aggro from enemies while Reaper is in Persona. Has decent amount of HP, very useful in solo activities like Walton and Guardian Carries. We will use this feature actively in the Moon Sound Reaper class engraving. Second option. When the green gauge bar is filled up, we can use dagger and shadow skills to fill another red bar on top of it. 
when the red bar is filled, a Reaper will enter into the Chaos mode. You can see 8 second buff right above the HP bar. When Reaper is in the Chaos mode, she will gain an additional 15% of the crit rate and 10% of movement and attack speed buffs. It is possible to maintain a permanent uptime if at least one dagger or shadow attack will be performed within 8 second windows. But if you fail to land any dagger or shadow skill attack, your chaos mode will be lost and you will be forced to fill it once again. This Reaper feature is actively used by the third class in Grave. Ultimate abilities. Lunar Eclipse Cadenza Used in PvE in 99% of the cases Doing a pretty small amount of damage Similar to one raid skill Has the same concept as when you press a Z button Reaper will jump back into the opposite direction of the mouse pointer Feel one gauge bar Solar Eclipse Requiem Used mainly in PvP You become invisible and you have 3 stacks to perform. Press V once again and Reaper will jump forward and deal some damage. You are immune to tier 3 control for both Awakening skills. Debuff immunity, super armor, level 3. I will review all Reaper skills that will be used for all recommended builds for both class engravings. Moonsound and Thirst. Green and purple skills are utility abilities that provide gate generation, gain movement speed, positioning, counter attacks, etc. They do everything except the damage. Red skills are doing the vast majority of our outgoing total damage. All dagger skills have three same level 1 tripods that implies a poison a debuff on a target on a hit. In PvE we interested only in poison corrosion. which applies a debuff on an enemy which reduces their defense rating by 12% by 12 seconds. It is equal to 7.7% .7 of increase in common damage. You cannot have more than one debuff applied at the same time. Shadow Dot Provides high gauge generation. Apply Poison Corrosion and Poison Damage debuff that stacks 3 times. Swoop Activation Tripod is reducing the cooldown of all our raid skills by 1.9 seconds. We can use this skill 2 times within 1 second window. If it will not be used on the second time within 1 second window, it will go on the cooldown. On the first use, Swoop Activation Tripod will be triggered. Very low gate generation. Poison Corrosion and Poison Damage Debuff will not be applied. On the second use, much higher gate generation. Poison Corrosion and Poison Damage Debuff will be applied. The swoop activation tripod will not be activated for the second time, so it can be triggered only once on the first use. Tripods Tier 1 Poison Corrosion Level 1 Tier 2 Quick Preparation Level 5 and Tier 3 Swoop Activation Level 5 This skill has the highest priority in our rotation because of swoop activation level 5 tripod. Very low cooldown and decent gauge generation. Nightmare provides high gauge generation. Apply poison corrosion, poison damage debuff that stacks three times. Two counter attacks on the same skill. I will show it a bit later. And 10% movement speed increase by two seconds on the second use. We can use this skill two times. On the first use, decent gauge generation. Throw a dagger, be aware that you will have a some small delay to release a dagger and travel speed is equal along all the paths. 
In other words, if you stay closer to the foe, your dagger will reach it faster. Almost instantly. Counter attack will be activated if the dagger lands in front of the target, right when the counter attack indicator will appear. Whenever a dagger landed on a target, a big purple circle will appear. This indicates that inside of this radius you are able to use it once again to teleport back to the foe. Be aware that the dagger throw range is not infinite. You can use a purple circle as a maximum range indicator. You cannot use it here, you can use it here. If dagger missed, it will go on a cooldown. If it reaches the target and you will have an option to use it for the second time within 8 second window. Poison corrosion and poison damage debuff will be applied. On a second use, decent cage generation, poison corrosion and poison damage debuff will not be applied. You will teleport 180 degrees to the opposite of where you currently are compared to the fall, not to the point where your dagger landed. This is how you can use it to your advantage and be right behind the fall back or in front if you want to land the second counter attack. Speaking about the second counter attack, to land it you need to be 180 degrees opposite to the fall face. Mandatory to land it in front of the, his face or counter attack will not work. The good thing that you do not have any delay on the second use and you will be teleported instantly. In addition, you will gain a 10% movement speed, not 15 because of the error of the tooltip, by 2 seconds. If Nightmare will not be used within 8 second window, it will go on a cooldown. Note that you will gain a split second debuff immunity super armor 3, so you are immune to knockbacks or stuns. Right here, right after the second use. Tripods. Tier 1 Poison Corrosion level 1. Tier 2 Quick Preparation level 5. Tier 3 Back Attack level 1 to gain a second counter attack. Front counter attack. Back counter attack. And tier 3 immunity. Let's check it once again. Right here. I land it for the first time, and then I click it once again, in order to be in the front. Distortion is a very useful movement skill that allows us to go through any foes, even Legion Raid Commanders. Generate a decent amount of gauge. Note that gauge will be generated only if you hit at least one target along your path. Zero gauge will be generated in other case. Tripods, Tier 1, Quick Preparation, level 5, Tier 2, Tailwind, level 5, to have additional 30% movement speed for 4 seconds, for Moon Sound, and level 1 for Thirst Class Engraving. Shadow Storm, the biggest gauge generation skill on the panel, the biggest damage dealer across all non-raid skills. Due to the tripod choices, Shadow Storms make a 8 meter charge and perform 5 strikes. Gauge is generated with every strike. First and fifth strikes provide the most gauge generation. Has a perfect synergy with the Shadow of the skill to fill the whole gauge bar. Tripods. Tier 1. Charge Shadow level 5 for Moon Sound class engraving and Charge Shadow or Piercing Strike level 5 for Thirst engraving, depends on your preference. Tier 2. Period level 5, Thirst class engraving. Quick preparation. Or Period level 5 for Moon Sound engraving, depends on your preference. Tier 3. Shadow Zone level 5. 
Red Raid Harvest Absorb Skills and the main source of Reaper Damage. Moon Sound Class Engraving uses 3 and Thirst Class Engraving uses 4 Red Skills. All of them are back attack only skills. We are in animation lock when we cast any of the red skills. It means that we cannot move or use any other skills until animation ends. We can use a space bar to interrupt skill casting. All of them have paralysis immune super armor level 1, so you are immune to basic flinches. Dance of Fury. Perform a series of strikes. The last attack deals the most damage. Weak point level 1, stagger level 2, tripods, tier 1, piercing strike level 5, tier 2, fatal dagger level 5 for the moon sound and chaos enhancement level 5 for thirst, tier 3, surprise move level 5, and last graffiti, jumps into the air and deal a huge amount of damage in the area. It is necessary to land in the area behind the foe, and a back attack will be applied, no matter in which direction you will be facing. You can consider it as another movement skill as well, in some way. Weak point level 1, stagger level 3, tripods, tier 1, vital point hit level 5, tier 2, Enhancement Swoop level 5 for the Moon Sound and Chaos Enhancement level 5 for Thirst. Tier 3, Testament level 5. Race Spear gathers energy and performs a massive damage single attack. The biggest damage dealing skill for Reaper Panel. I do recommend using this skill only if you're completely sure that you will land a back attack. The difference between back and non back attack is huge due to Tier 2 Tripod ambush that increase back attack damage stagger level 2 tripods tier 1 fatal dagger level 5 tier 2 ambush level 5 tier 3 concentrated attack level 5 we just finished with 7 mandatory skills for both class engravings Let's check candidates for the 8th spot. Silence Measure Jumps into the air and perform a quick and charge attack straight to the foe with a small radius. We don't use it on a moon sound build due to various reasons. Number 1. This skill has the lowest damage out of all 4 raid skills. We are not able to find a place for 4th raid skill in our rotation because of gauge management. But because we almost don't care about gauge management in search, Silence Measure is a perfect match as 4th Raid and 8th skill on Thirst Reaper. Stagger level 3. Tripods. Tier 1. Quick Reparation level 5. Tier 2. Sharp Fall level 1. And Tier 3. Ground Smash level 5. Because we already found the last skill for the Thirst Reaper, all the following skills will be considered as the last spot for the Moon Sound Reaper. Shadow Trap. Yet another mobility and utility skill, and in my opinion, the best fit for the Moon South Reaper as the candidate for the last spot on the panel. In the current meta, the vast majority of players are using Shadow Trap, both on Korean and Russian servers. There are some exceptions and interesting ideas, but I don't think that it's necessary to point them out, at least right now. So, Shadow Trap's offers. A decent gauge generation. Second, and I will say faster counterattack. Another mini mobility skill has the similar concept as Shadow Clone feature. You will dash back to the mouse pointer in the opposite direction. Active Shadow Tier 3 Tripod, which reduces the cooldown of all our Shadow skills by 2.4 seconds, which is very good considering the fact that we will use two additional shadow skills. Very quick animation. Two second stun is useful on Brikshaza phase 1. Hard to miss due to huge skill radius. 
can be a bit tricky to use, especially for the new players, but I strongly recommend to use it in the Moonshout Reaper from the day one. This is Shadow Trap Counter Attack. You need to stay in front of the target and use the Shadow Trap skill like 0 0.3 seconds in advance, right before the counter attack. Spirit Catch is a dagger utility and mobility skill. Perform a quick 4 meter dash. Provides a decent gauge generation. It was in the meta like 3 or 4 months ago. I was playing it myself as well, but decided to change it to Shadow Trap. The biggest downside is the long animation of the attack, the charge. Easy to interrupt. With the level 10 cooldown gems, we don't have any time to cast it and place it in our rotation. I still recommend using it in one of two builds. This is a bit easier to manage, especially for the beginners. Uh, maybe you would like to play with it more than with the Shadow Trap, and it will fit your playstyle. Around 5-7% DPS difference on a dummy dome. You can check one of my videos to understand the damage difference and rotation comparison. Let's talk about Shadow Trap a bit more and go into details why it is the most recommended 8th skill on the panel. Apart from that, I already told you in the Shadow Trap and Spirit Catch skill radius. Before the Korean Balan Patch, Reaper had only one counter attack on the Shadow Trap. Counter attack is almost always mandatory in high end contents like Legion Raids. The problem was that even if you prefer to play with any other skill except for the Shadow Trap, it was necessary to change it to Shadow Trap every time. Basically, we had no choice over there. Right now, we got rid of this problem with the double Nightmare Counter Attack. So, why are players still actively using it? Number one, they already got used to it. Number two, another Counter Attack on the panel is always good. In addition, in some encounters, you cannot rely on the Nightmare due to its slow animation on the first round. Much harder to land it with a nightmare in comparison with the with the shadow trap, like Voltan 64 bars counter attack. Number three, pretty fast animation. Number four, active shadow tier three tripod, which reduced the cooldown of all our shadow skills by 2.4 seconds, significantly improves our rotation. Number five. We are already actively using Nightmare for the gate generation. Meanwhile, we can hold Shadow Trap for the counter a bit longer. So we have uh, two options here. Option number one, include Shadow Trap as an A skill and use it by default in all encounters. This is something that I recommend you to do so. Option number two, switch it every time when you need a counter attack, like a bolt on. Phase 2, Vikings, etc. In my opinion, sooner or later you will still will come back to the Shadow Trap in any case, because you'll be tired to switch it between them all the time. A moon sound class engraving. Whenever the gauge bar is filled and we press Z to summon a Shadow Clone, we don't need to wait 5 seconds until we will get all 5 damage stacks. We can use Ray Skill instantly to gain 160% increased damage. I will use a max roll site for better presentation. Unfortunately, they still do not have all the information available about the Reaper. For example, Moon Sound engraving is a necromancy. I am not able to pick Reaper Earth Entropy set as well. That's why I'm forced to use this workaround. So let's talk about the set. This is the only set that Reaper will ever use, because all our damage comes from back attacks. It has everything that we need back attack damage, crit chance and crit damage. I will explain a bit more about the set for someone that never used this in the past. So you have two numbers for each set bonus. What do they actually mean? Let's make an example for the first set bonus. We have crit damage for 70% and back and head attack modify this to 55%. So if you will perform a back attack, you will gain 55% of the crit damage. But if you miss a back attack, you will gain only 70% of the crit damage. Same concept for set bonus for 4 and 6 pieces. Stats. Specialization, crit and swiftness are only 3 usable stats for the Reaper. You should avoid all accessory with any other stats. 
Let's take a look at the Google Excel sheet and see how this works. The classical moon sound build that is used by around 90% of the total Reaper population using 500 plus grid and 1800 plus specialization with a bracer and 10% pet bonus. Let's start with the crit chance. I introduced here all the sources of the crit chance. Some of them are still not available on NAU, for example, bracers. 1% of the crit chance is, is equal to 27.94 crit points. As you can see, we can gain a crit from a lot of different sources. Let's talk about them in detail. Legacy. You gain some points by finishing storyline quests, killing some guardians for the first time, etc. Card collection. Uh, we get some cards, we upgrade them and gain some additional stats as well. Necklace, Earth Entropy, 4 bonus pieces, Tier 1 17%, Tier 2 3%, and Tier 3 2%. Back Attack. If you land a Back Attack, you will gain an additional 10% of the crit chance and 5% of damage. Adrenaline Engraving, level 1 5%, level 2 10%, and level 3 15%. Lost Wind Cliff deck 7% Bracer. You can roll crit and additional bracer effects. Class debuff bonus. If you're playing in the same party with Arcana, Gunslinger, Dead Eye, uh, or Gun Lancer, you will gain a 10% of the crit chance increase. Same concept with the Lance Master, Battle Master and Striker, but with 80% of the chance. And of course, Raid Skill Tripods are the biggest crit chance generators. 40% for the Rage Spear, 60% for the Tensor Fury, and 40% uh, for the Last Gravity level 5 Tripods. By adding or removing necessary cells, you can adjust your crit chance accordingly for each Raid skill. You can create a duplicate or copy of this Excel sheet and use it on your own to perform this uh, to perform your own calculations. To do this, you need to click on the file, create a copy or duplicate, and create a copy. Specialization is the most important stat for the Reaper because it's increased gate generation, damage for both Awakening and all raid skills. So, how much exact specialization do we need to fill the gauge bar? Please refer to this screenshot. Here you can have all these exact numbers for possible skill combination. Unfortunately, I have only Korean version. So let's take one of the examples. So with the 1224 specialization, if we use a Shadow Storm skill with the level 4 tier 1 tripod that increases gate generation, with the golden wealth rune and on top of it we will use shadow dot with the epic wealth rune we will fill the whole gauge bar but in any case uh, i still recommend to gain as much specialization as you can without no exceptions the hybrid moon sun build that is gaining some popularity right now in korea using 500 swiftness and 1800 specialization with a bracer and 10% of pet bonus. By losing 500 crit, we lose around 80% of the crit chance, but gain 8.57 attack and movement speed. In addition, there is 10.23% of the cooldown reduction. We will be much faster, but we need to somehow compensate for crit losses. This build is used mainly by Korean top gear score reapers that have crit chance overcap. They are compensating it with adrenaline level 1 or 2 as a 6 engraving. I do not recommend using it, especially at the beginning on NIU regions, because your overall crit chance will be low and you will be less efficient. Bracer will be available at 1490 gear score when normal abril shoot will be released. Specialization is a must-have stat on it, plus anything that can provide any damage. 
without a bracer you will have around 1680 specialization with 90 percent quality on all accessories including 10 percent bonus buff from the pet if you want to have more information about bracers and their possible roles you can check memorizer and saint one doc files in the links engravings grudge best damage engraving in the game Provides 20% more damage to bosses, but increases your income damage by 20%. Ambush Master. Increase the damage of all back attacks by 25%. All raid skills are back attacks, so it is pretty obvious choice for us. Moon Sound. Class Engraving. Provides 160% damage increase for our next raid skill. Kursdal. 16% additional attack power, but... 25% less healing from all sources. Kinblunt. According to the Kinblunt description, plus 50 crit damage, but your attacks has the chance to deal minus 20% of the damage. This chance is equal to 10%, which applies for both crit and non-crit attacks. Please refer to Kinblunt tab to check how much damage you will gain. Note that grid damage in the table presented before King Blunt been applied. With 250 grid damage and 90% of the crit chance, King Blunt will provide us with a 16.77% of the damage. 6 engraving. We have two options here adrenaline and either predator. Adrenaline provides 5% of the crit chance and 1.8% of attack power at 6 stacks. Pretty easy to build and maintain those stacks with a shadow dot. Either predators provide 6% of attack power and 9% of the defense. The biggest downside is that we need to spend around 4 minutes to gather all 30 stacks of the buff which makes it not efficient for the short encounters. Personally, I prefer Adrenaline because it provides that additional crit damage and synergy with the Kinblunt. Possible engraving combination 5 plus 2 This is a pure dream and the best possible setup for any characters available on Korean or Russian server. Will be accessible with the heroic Brilshaza region raid on NAEU regions. Two major problems. Number one, all ancient accessories should have nine engraved points, and number two, nine seven stone. Five plus one. Doable in all regions. We have two ways to do so. Have nine seven stone and all relic accessories with eight points, and with ancient accessories we don't need to have nine seven stone. 5 engravings. Pretty easy to achieve with 2 level 4 legendary engravings. Will be exp expensive on NAU at the Reaper release because of lack of good class accessories. But with the time, price will go down. 4 plus 2. We can remove a course doll and add adrenaline with a level 2. Pretty achievable. 4 plus 1. Same, but with the adrenaline level 1. I don't recommend to use a Kinblind, Grudge, or Corsdal as a level 1 engraving. And 4. I think that this is the best price efficient ratio for NAEU region. Ideal for players that just want to try it without any major investments. So it's good option for Reaper as an alt character. Because prices will be so high on the Reaper release, I suggest this variation as a starting point. Just uh, use two level 3 epic moon sound engravings to avoid any extra spending on the engraving book and good class accessories. The runes. For dagger and shadow skills, we will use five wealth runes for additional gauge generation. For maximum efficiency, you need to put them in the same order as me. Raid skills are using 3 Gale Winds runes for additional cast speed. 
At the beginning, I suggest you to use only this setup. When you become more familiar with the Reaper class, you can change one of Blue Wells runes to Legendary Rage rune, or try some different setups. If you are missing a few Wells runes, you can fill empty slots with the Rage and Bleed runes, or just use a common Wells rune. 8 cooldown gems for each skill on the panel, and 3 damage gems for raid skills. My personal recommendation to have at least all level 5 gems for Heroic Walton Legion Raid and to have at least all level 7 gems for Kakul Saiden Legion Raid. On top of it, I want to share with you this lovely Excel sheet that you might find useful. We got everything that we need to try Moonsault build and practice. The main idea is to build a gauge bar as fast as efficient as we can with the dagger and shadow skills. Press Z to summon a Shadow Clone and use any out of 3 raid skills on the panel with 160% additional damage. Whenever summon a Shadow Clone, Reaper jumps back into the positive direction of the mouse pointer. Our goal is to flip at the foe back and press raid skill. To avoid any additional movements and damage loss. We can use a backflip for our advantage and positioning. You cannot reduce or cancel an animation. Don't think about this feature as a downside. Consider it as yet another free space bar with a tier 3 immunity. This is extremely useful and mandatory feature for all Moonsun build players. Just a small showcase how you can dodge Argus and Walton attacks by pressing Z at the right moment. By having 3 raid skills on the panel, we are obliged to gain enough gauge to use all 3 of them before the first one that we use comes out from the cooldown. That's why it is very important to land not only raid skills, but all dagger and shadow skills as well. If you feel a gauge bar not fast enough, you will break a damage cycle, and you will lose a significant amount of potential damage. Almost all reaper damage comes from the raid skills, which are back attacks only. We need to try to land as many back attacks as possible. No matter how good player you are, it is impossible to maintain a 100% back attack rate due to random patterns and unpredictable for movement. Always play out of the skills of the panel and think in advance about your next move to maintain a damage cycle. Shadow Dot is the most important non-rate skill on the panel. Tier 3 Swoop Activation Tripod is reducing the cooldown of all rate skills by 1.9 seconds. Use Shadow Dot even if not all the red skills are on the cooldown, to avoid a situation that all three red skills will be on the cooldown when your gauge bar will be full. It's mandatory to find a perfect balance between your current setup, depends a lot on your cooldown gems, tripod, runes, etc. Let me demonstrate. This is wrong. This is much better. Spam Shadow Dot whenever you can to reduce rate skill cooldowns. The most challenging part is to be efficient with your gauge gaining. How to not generate more gauge as it is necessary? This comes with some time and practice. You will train your muscle memory and brain enough to make the perfect combination of the skills. It is mandatory to know how much gauge every skill generates so you can make a skill sequence. The movement skills will be actively used in our rotation to build gauge. 
so you can get in trouble if all mention skills and the spacebar will be on the cooldown at the same time. Monson rotation depends on your level of the cooldown gems, tripods, runes, etc. Something that works perfectly fine for me could not work for you because you are lacking something. Here, how ideal Reaper rotation will look like. Shadow Storm, Shadow Dota Times, Rage Spear, Shadow Dota Times, Nightmare, Distortion, Nightmare, Shadow Dota Times, Last Graffiti, Shadow Trap, Shadow Dota Times, Nightmare, Distortion, Nightmare, Dance of Fury. This is our full damage cycle. I encourage you to check one of my videos with both Shadow Trap and Spirit Catch DPS and Rotation comparison. Thirst. With the Thirst class engraving, each bar will feel 30% faster and 25% attack power increased while in Chaos mode. For the set, we will use Earth Entropy set 6 pieces, the same as for the Moon Sound. Stats. Let's go back to this lovely Excel sheet. For the Thirst, Stats should be equally divided between specialization and swiftness with equal proportions. For example, 1000 sweetness and 1000 specialization equally split between all accessories. Plus 10% pet to gain around 100 specialization or more to obtain 55 to 45 proportion in favor of specialization. For the creatures, it's the same concept as for the Moonsault but with a few differences. First of all, we lost our necklace and potential around 500 crit points, but gained 15% of the crit chance due to chaos mode. We lost our Dance of Fury tripods, and we added Silent Smasher as a fourth raid skill. For the Bracer, We'll use something with a specialization, swiftness, crit, and anything that can provide any damage. Engravings. Grudge, Thirst, Course Doll, Ambush Master, and Raid Captain. How to calculate the amount of damage that we will have for the Raid Captain? Please refer back to this Excel sheet. Let's imagine that we will have 1075 of sweetness, which will provide 18.44% of additional movement speed. 10% more from the Chaos mode and yet another 10% 10, 10 from Blessing of Battle Tier 2 Swamp of Ur Yearning set. I do take into account the movement speed increase on Nightmare and Distortion skills. 10% for 2 seconds for the Nightmare on the second use and 20% more for 3 seconds for Distortion. So in rate we will have 38.44% of additional movement speed and by applying the formula we will obtain 17.3% of additional damage. Why not use King Blend as a fifth engraving? Because all these changes, crit chance is significantly lower in comparison with the Moon Sound build. On top of it, note the gap between Rage Spear plus Rat Graffiti and Dance of Fury plus Sun and Smasher. It is always 40% difference no matter what we do. And this is the problem because if we will add more critical chance we will go over 100% for Rage Spear plus Last Graffiti and this will be inefficient. Let's imagine a situation that we have 90% crit chance for Rage Spear and Last Graffiti and uh, 50% crit chance for Dance of Fury plus Silent Smasher. Let's go back to this in my tab. And we see that Kimblind will provide 60.77% for Rage Spear plus Pass Graffiti. Why not use Adrenaline as a fifth engraving? Pretty much the same explanation. We will be overcapped with the crit chance for Rage Spear and Last Graffiti. As you can see, here I already added Adrenaline 11 3 to the list and uh, Raid Spear and Last Graffiti is already overcapped the crit. I recommend Adrenaline as a 6 engraving for a bit more crit chance. Thirst possible engraving combination. 5 plus 2. Grudge, Thirst, Curse Doll, Ambush Master, Raid Captain, Adrenaline level 2. 5 plus 1. Same combination, but adrenaline level 1. 
5 without adrenaline. 4 plus 2 Grudge, Thirst, Ambushmaster, Red Cla Captain, Level 2 Kursdal, or Adrenaline, Level 2. 4 plus 1 Grudge, Thirst, Ambushmaster, Red Captain, Adrenaline, Level 1. 4 Grudge, Thirst, Ambushmaster, Red Captain. Skills and tripods. For Thirst, we are using the same 7 skills on the panel that we use for the Moon Sun build. The only difference is that we are swapping Shadow Trap for 4th Raid Skill, Sunny Smasher. We are changing only 4 tripods. Distortion. Tailwind, level 1. Plus Gravity. We are changing Enhanced Swoop for Chaos Enhancement. Dance of Fury. We are changing Fatal Dagger to Chaos Enhancement. And for Silent Smasher, we are picking these two tripods. Quick Preparation and Ground Smash. Runes. Because right now we are not relying that much on a gauge and we have 30% more gauge generation due to the Thirst Engraving, we can be more flexible with rune selection and use a different variation for Dagger and Shadow skills. For example, Bleed, Rage, Quick Recharge, etc but we're still gonna use 4 Gale Wind runes for raid skills. Gems. 5 damage gems for 4 raid skills and shadow storm, and 6 cooldown gems for 4 raid skills, shadow dot and shadow storm. And our idea for thirst build is very simple. Build the second rage gauge bar to gain class and grammy bonus and damage from raid skill tripods with any dagger or shadow skills. Ideally, just to use a shadow storm. Maintain a Chaos mode with one Dagger or Shadow attack within 8 seconds. Spam as much red skills as you can from the back. Spam Shadow Dot to reduce the cooldown of all red skills as much as you can. Your rotation depends on the level of your cooldown gems and tripods. It is necessary to adjust your gameplay accordingly and use more Shadow Dot as to be efficient as you can. Shadow Storm can provide some additional source of damage, so you can use it as soon as it will go out of the cooldown. Because we don't have same gauge management as Moon Sound Reaper, we can keep Nightmare and Distortion for the defense or offense. Moon Sound vs Thirst Comparison Moon Sound Pros Up to 10% more damage if played perfectly. Best suitable for the end game. More interesting, fun, and challenging gameplay. Big great numbers. If you want to be a tryhard and get everything from the Reaper, Moon Sound is the only way. Moon Sound Cons Not beginner friendly. Feel slow and movements and attack speed but in the right hands you will see almost no differences to positioning and movement skills. More chances to miss a back attack with the crit spec build because of the lower swiftness and attack speed. It is very expensive, especially at the beginning. Less impairment. 3 raid skills for the moon and 4 raid skills for the thirst. A weak point as well. Much harder gauge management and damage cycles will add another difficulty layer. Hard to play properly. Requires all pieces, set, card deck, runes, tripod, etc. to be effective and enjoyable to play. Movement skills are used in rotation and often can be on a cooldown in a critical moment. First pros. Beginner friendly. If you want to try Reaper without any investments or use it as one of your alt characters. Much easier gauge management, just fill both bars and keep it up. Easy gameplay. Build Chaos mode, spam raid skills when they are not on the cooldown. Don't forget about Shadow Dot and you're ready to go. Much cheaper, I do it to 50% specialization and 50% of swiftness accessories on low mid to your gear score. 1000 plus swiftness in the build provides faster movement, skill animation, more impairment, 
and the weak point due to low skill cooldown and less chance to miss a back attack because of sudden fall movements. Thirst cons. Very simplified and boring gameplay. Less damage in ideal case scenario, but pretty easy to move the gap to none. Expensive endgame due to 5 damage gems versus 3 in a Moonsun build. So at the end, which build to pick? Everything depends on your own preferences, playstyle, experience and what you want to achieve. Pick Thirst if you are a new player, if Reaper will be your out character, if you don't want to spend a lot of gold and resources, if you just want a simple gameplay, decent damage without any additional effort. Pick a Moon Sound if, if you want to take everything that you can from the class. If you like challenge. If you are an experienced Lost Ark player and you know what you are doing. Another option, just try both. You can start with the Thirst and then with a couple of weeks or months switch to the Moon Sound when you are ready, when you will gain some experience and basic knowledge how this class works. Light of Salvation is the best car set in the game for almost all DPS classes. Reaper is no exception, because of 7 and 8% for 18 and 30 set bonus pieces damage increase. Holy damage type is very useful as well on encounters like Vikis second and third phases, Guardians like Valganos and Dark Yuhu, but it's really really hard to get. I recommend to start using this deck after 18 pieces set bonus. A Lost Wind Cliff 12 pieces bonus. Crit rate 7%. This card set is pretty easy to get. This will be your starting damage deck. You will use it until you will get to 18 pieces Light of Salvation card set. 3 Umar Families. Provides a plus 12 additional back attack damage. Because all our damage comes from the back attack, this is a very nice card set for us. It takes 3 slots only so we can mix it with the Forest of the Giants for some extra defense or damage with the Fate of Lazenis card deck. Fate of Lazenis, 10 pieces only. We are interested only in the last 10 pieces Awakening. Successful attacks create a chance of all elemental damage plus 44% for 8 seconds with a cooldown of 32 seconds. So let's take a look on Reaper Tripods. For example, last Graffiti. If at least one of three tripods will have an element is now attack, it means that we are going to do elemental damage with a specific element, dark, light, lightning, etc. And this deck will work. All four raid skills have an elemental damage tag in their tripods. So, for example, in the Moonsound build, we are using three raid skills and two of them plus graffiti and uh, Dance of Fury, picked by default. So these two skills will benefit from the fate of Lathenius car set. Now we're gonna talk about defensive decks. I want to say that I do not recommend using defensive decks at all. Only offensive ones that we have mentioned before. Post arc is all about the damage. If you're dying a lot, this is purely because of you. Get better with your game and don't commit mistake or just change the class. Forest of Giants provides additional defense and survivability to diminishing grudge and coastal engravings. Note that first effect works only on recovery items, potions, but you will still receive less heals from other sources, like a bar kill, for example. Well, meet again. Worse than a Forest Giants defensive deck. I don't recommend to using it in any case. But if so, use it with the Forest of the Giants or three Umar families. Just a quick summary. Light of Salvation, this is the best in slot card set on the level 30. Use it in, on all of the encounters. If uh, you don't have Light of Salvation level 30, but for some odd reasons you have three Umar family level 15 and Fate of Lazenis level 10, you can use this card, these two card sets. If you don't have to mention card set, use Light of Salvation level 18 or Lost Wind Cliff level 12. What you don't need to do as a Reaper player? Don't use Grudge, King Blind Weapon or Curse Doll as a level 1 engraving. Or use any other engravings that are not in the list. They will make your life harder 
affect your overall performance and survivability. The biggest sin that Reaper player can commit is use a heavy armor engraving. Don't do that, ever. Lost Ark is all about the damage. If you cannot survive without it, play safe, try harder, work on your mistakes, analyze every death. Don't use any different stats except crit, specialization and swiftness. When you die by playing Reaper, don't blame your teammates, don't get angry or mad. Just try to understand what went wrong and try to be better next time. Reaper hate. I believe that Reapers will get a lot of hate from other classes on NAEU release. A lot of people will like to try it, this is for sure, but only a small percentage of the players will go to the internet. I will try to look for some information on how to play and build this class. They will build Reaper in their own way, which will be terrible in almost all of the cases. Because it does not exist an own way to build a Reaper, you should strictly follow the rules to be at least somehow competitive, especially at the beginning. They will apply to Walton, Vikis raids without any knowledge of how to play this class properly, how squishy it is, no tripods, no entropy set, bad stats for engravings in the best case scenario. They will die, and they will die a lot. You will never see Reaper in the MVP chart within the next few weeks. All these factors may create a stereotype that Reapers are useless and they are dying more than any other classes. I hope you liked this guide and found it useful, at least in some way. I tried to cover everything that you need to know to make a decent start as a Reaper player. Reaper is a very specific class that definitely will not suit everyone. But I still strongly recommend you at least try it, especially when it is in the best possible shape as she has ever been since release. Please subscribe if you are interested in more Reaper content. I will try to do my best to cover all the new things that will happen in the Reaper world. Leave a comment if you have any questions or maybe I forgot to mention something. Thanks for watching, have a great day, goodbye!